Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Welcome to section 3.3. Piece of cake. All that we're going to do in section 3.3 is really talk about when we use specific types of, of uh, notation, of derivative notation, what does it really mean? Okay, so we know that y prime equals instantaneous rate of change of y, right? We know that f prime of x equals right? We got that. Now, with this one, we got to be a little more careful. This is with respect to x, okay? As is this one. If I do dy over dx, then this is instantaneous rate of change all the way out. They all mean exactly the same thing. But what happens if I write something like this? What if I say uh, dq over dp? Okay. Now, if I if this is all that I see, then what I can do is I can instantly interpret a couple of things. Q right here. Q is the dependent variable. In other words, it acts very much like the y or the f does, right? Remember the dependent variable is the y value if y equals f of x. P is the independent. P is independent variable. Okay? Now, let me show you why this is important. Let's, for example, say that Q of, let's just say that Q equaled um, 4z eta P over pi r squared. Pretty intimidating looking, right? Everybody agrees? But watch, if I am then asked to come up with dq over dp, well, guess what? I'm going to put change colors here. It'd be more fun. This is the only variable, that's the only independent variable in the whole thing. As far as my derivative is concerned, as far as this guy is concerned, all this extra non-P stuff is, you can probably guess what it is. It's a constant. It's just a constant. It's along for the ride. I don't even have to worry about it. So watch what happens. If Q equals 4Z A to P over pi R squared, then guess what DQ over DP equals? Well, the derivative of P is 1, so this just turns into 4Z A to over pi R squared. Uh, pretty hard stuff, isn't it? So, for example, let me give you another one. Um, what's the what's Newton's law again? Let's see, Newton's law of gravitational force between two bodies. I think it's a little m, big m. It, I think it's over r squared. I don't know. You guys would know this better than I would. This is uh, the force between any, like if I were to hang a bowling ball in my room and I were to hang a, a tennis ball in my room, um, I would take the mass of the tennis ball, mass of the bowling ball, there's a universal gravitational constant, and then the distance between and I would square it. Right? It's pretty intimidating looking. I mean, look at this. There's one, two, three, four. There's five variables that I have to deal with. However, if I'm taking df over dr, then guess what these are? These guys right here are just constants. Oh, Ripley, I'm not afraid anymore. This is really just some constant who cares times r to the negative 2. Well, the derivative of a constant times r to the negative 2 is just the, the constant times the derivative of r to the negative 2, which I know is negative 2 times r to the negative 3, right? And then all i got to do is stuff the constant in there, which in this case happens to be g m big M. So I end up with, if I want to get pretty, remember, take your derivatives one step algebraically further. I didn't say that very correctly, but you know what I mean. Negative 2g, little m, big M, all over r cubed. Huh. About the easiest thing that we've ever done. Now, things change. Oh, by the way, this is, how would we say this? How would I say this? This is the instantaneous, instantaneous rate of change of change of f with respect 
with respect. You got to pay your respects with <laughs> that was stupid. With respect to R. That's it. Now we know in the context of this equation, which was given to us by Newton, that this is the it, this the rate at which the instantaneous rate at which force changes with respect to R at any distance. And we know this in a vacuum. If I take a bowling ball and a, um, a tennis ball and I hang them further apart, the, that, that force is different. And the rate of change differs as, that, that for, as those two bodies move closer to each other. They have a greater ability to exert force on one another. Thank God, or we wouldn't be orbiting the sun. All right, now in economics, it's a little bit different. There's something a little more nuanced here. Let's talk about economics just for a second. This doesn't take very long. Economics. Okay, let's say, for example, I'm just going to make something up here off the top of my head. Let's say that I come up with a cost function, all right? And my cost function is C of X equals, I don't know, let's say 14,000 uh, plus 2X squared minus 0.001X. This is completely made up. All right, now let's make sure that we understand exactly what this says. This is, X is the number of units manufactured. Okay, so I'm making um, iPads. This 1400 represents the original cost that it takes me. So in other words, before I can make one iPad, I have to invest 1400 somethings. I got to pay for the building, I got to pay the labor, I got to turn the lights on, I got to heat and cool the place, I got to pay for all of the stuff before I can do one silly little little iPad, okay? And then the cost starts to go up as I start building them, right? It's because because this little chunk of this equation has iPod units which we're calling x in this case, but as I maybe as I build more and more there's I don't know, maybe I'm getting government subsidies or something like that. Who knows? But the cost functions can look horrific. They, they, they're these awful um, functions at time. At times, excuse me. However, all that you need to know is real. All that you need to realize is that this represents the total cost of producing of producing um, X units. Okay. So, for example. C of, let's keep this easy because I'm simple kind of folk, C of a thousand. If it's going to cost me, let's see, it's going to be 1400 somethings plus two times a thousand, right? Minus 0 0.001 times a thousand. Notice how clever I am. These was one one thousand and that's a thousand. Uh -huh. So this ends up being, well, let's see, a thousand times a thousand is a million, right? So I've got, um, 1400 plus 2 million minus 1. Yeah. And I end up with, I end up having to spend, it's going to cost me 2 million, uh, where am I at? 2 million, 1399 dollars, right? You yell at me if that mathematics is wrong, but I think it's right. Oh, by the way, that should be squared. It's because a thousand times a thousand is a million. All right, that cost me a total of 2 million. $1,399 to produce a thousand units. Now, what we got to be careful with here is if I start with, I want to know if C of X is total cost, then C primed of X, just like before, is instantaneous, instantaneous change of cost at x units okay so in other words if i'm looking at c primed of 1000 for that for that guy i just did all right so c well, i forget what it was what was it 1400 uh, plus 2x squared minus 0.001x right well let's look at this c primed of x in this case Excuse me, you gotta have sound effects. 1400 goes away. I end up with 4x minus 0 0.001. The derivative of 2x squared is 4x. The derivative of 0.001x is just 0 0.001. Okay? So c primed of x is equal to 4000. If I just, or c primed of x, Ripley, come on now. Get it together, would you? 
c prime of a thousand is equal to four thousand. I'm just plugging a thousand into c prime of x, right? Minus 0 0.001, which is really just four thousand. Now, what does this really mean? Well, we're going to play around with this just a little bit in class, but I want to I want to make sure I plant the seed correctly. Really, in the context of economics, what it really means is this is the approximate the approximate cost of producing producing the 1,001st unit. Now, even though literally as far as this function is concerned, this represents this value right here represents the slope of the tangent line at, excuse me, the tangent line to this curve at x equals 1,000, right? We're looking at x equals 1,000. I mean, if we think about it strictly mathematically. However, if you think about what that really means, remember, because if we've got a curve and we've got a tangent line, well, the slope of this tangent line is really, because the curve and the line begin to look very much the same, it's really going to be the change in the cost between the x equals 1,000 and an x equals 1,000 first unit. So we can interpret that in the business sector as being the approximate cost of producing the 1,000 first. Now, why is it approximate? Because the curve and the line are not necessarily the same. Okay, the curve and the line aren't the same, and that's why it's only an approximation. All right, so th that's really it. Believe it or not, that's all of section, <clears throat> excuse me, 3.3. So enjoy. We'll play some more in class tomorrow, and I hope you have a really good day.